there we go. Um, I often encounter a lot of uh, students, particularly graduating seniors, who say that they are, um, they're waiting to be recruited and um, it'll be the end of their senior year and they really have no real idea of what that timeline looks like. And so we really felt like this is a really uh, a helpful conversation to have so that they can kind of level set expectations and have some idea of what that, what that process looks like. Also with new trends, and specifically the NIL deals, like what does that encompass? What does that mean? We hear a lot, we hear about a lot of college athletes who have who sign deals and make a lot of money. And so students are really excited to know more about that. Um, so I'm excited because I know Shay has all the insight. She has all the all the information and um, I'm always uh, excited to share this platform with her. So I'm gonna turn it over to her to lead her talk. I'll be uh, moving through the, the presentation, but if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, she will answer any questions that you have about this topic and she'll provide you with her contact information. It's on the screen now and it's, it's also going to be on the follow the last slide. Um, so if you want to follow up with her to get more one on one support, by all means, reach out to her. She is an invaluable resource. Um, and so with no further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Shay Collins. Thanks again, Shay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm also on live as well. So. Thank you all for joining um, tonight. I want to say thank you for taking the time, I should say it that way, to join tonight because there are many other things that you could be doing um, and you can have another opportunity at some other time. But this is a free resource, free opportunity. So if you know someone that is going to college or thinking about going to college, tell them right now, join, 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 join. I'm also live on my IG page. It's 365 underscore mentoring coaching. So if they don't want to join the Zoom, they can just go live and my IG that's here on the screen, 365 underscore mentor and coaching. So they can join live there as well if they don't um, want to get into the Zoom call right now. So thank you all for taking the invested time. As you can see there, um, I am Shay Collins. Um, I am a certified master, certified athletic administrator, but I'm also the founder, CEO of 365 mentoring and coaching as well. And I'm an athletic director also currently um, as well. So we're going to get started. Um, as the screen, the next screen will have just some information about myself. I will not read uh, that information to you, but hold on, Shay, give me one second. I gotta, okay. I gotta reset it up. Sorry. Okay, sorry. But um, as I was just saying, the the goal is to help you all understand. I also have a guest with me tonight, um, which is going to talk about the NIL deal because this college athlete has an NIL deal, so we're going to hear from him as well. But again, um, if you have questions that she already stated, you can put those in the chat. I will definitely answer those at the end. Um, but I do want to make sure that Mr. Smith has time to communicate to you all as well as we go through. Um, but that's just my background there and where I, where I am right now. Um, I went to Virginia State University, the Virginia State University Trojans at heart. And so it definitely made me the person that I am. I was also a basketball coach and I was helping my girls go to college um, and be successful. 10 of my girls want to play college basketball. Um, and I did all of their stuff, right? You know how people say, you know, it's up to the coach. It's up to this person, that person. I did all of it with the help of Miss Davis, which was a school counselor um, at the school that I was at. So she and I really teamed up together to help the kids go to college. And because I saw the deficiency in coaches not knowing the information, not having the information, parents blaming coaches for not helping their students, but also parents didn't take an active role um, it has led me to the point where I am now with 365 mentoring and coaching, constantly helping student athletes and parents understand the role. So um, as we get into this, um, our goal tonight is to talk about the basic qualifications, how to qualify a recruiting calendar, and then how to prepare. What if you don't want to go to college for sports? You've changed your mind. You still need grades. You still need to have an academic um, report. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And um, now let's talk about the three areas of concern, division one, two, and three. Clear differences, this is the snippet, we're gonna go a little bit further in detail in the next couple of slides, but division one and two, right now there's no standard test because they took those away um, once COVID hit, they took those away as a requirement. Now, can you still take those for scholarship reasons? Yes, but as a requirement, it's not necessary right now. GPA is a requirement for each level, one and two, D1, two, three, D2, two, two, GPA. Now, when we talk about that GPA, that GPA is coming from your core courses, right? Now, 
Can anybody put in the chat how many core courses do you need? Anybody know that? I'm glad you said no, because I'm going to tell you about that in a few minutes. Somebody said four. All right, good guess. Anybody else? 12, good guess. All right, so we're going to talk about that. I'm glad. Guess what? 12 plus four is 16. Whoa, y'all good. It's 16. All right, so we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and then division three, because it's not guaranteed that you will get money for athletics at any D3 school. There is no athletic money. It's all based on academics. So that's the difference in the two. One is scholarship-based or money-based. The other is strictly academic. So with the D3 school, you have to actually be accepted to the school, as the other schools are as well. But some D3 schools have various academic requirements. So that's why some students don't make it in a D3 level, because they may not qualify for the school individually. But financial aid is also available at both areas for maybe, you know, taking money off and things like that. And then how do you apply? In order to be considered a student athlete at a college, you must fill out the clearinghouse application. Now, summer of your junior year, that means if you are a junior right now, you need to fill this form out. If you are a sophomore, you got a little bit of time. You're a freshman, you got a lot of time. If you are a senior and you haven't done it and you're going to play college, you're way behind, that coach has probably already got into your butt about it. So if you are a junior and you're looking to go and play sports, you need to fill out the clearinghouse form. You need to have your school counselor information because there's a number for the school on there. So you want to make sure you do that before school closes or at least when you come back to school in August or September for those who are coming back. Now, where it says there is a fee, there is a $100 fee for the clearinghouse form. That form, that $100, if you are in a school that has free and reduced lunch or everybody gets free lunch, you can get a waiver from your school counseling department. But if that's not the case, then you will need to pay that $100, okay? Now, again, put in the question that you have in the chat there. All right, let's talk about each level. So. As we talked about the core courses, you all said somebody put it in chat four, somebody put it in chat 12, so we came with 16, great job, y'all passed the test. But that's your core, core GPA. So let's say, for example, you have a 2.3 cumulative GPA. You may not have a 2.3 core GPA. So it is what you get in these core courses, and I'm not reading this to you all, I don't read screens to students because I think y'all can read, but... You do need 16 core courses, and this is how you get those core courses there on the screen, okay? So again, earn a core course GPA. Core course GPA is different than a cumulative GPA. Your cumulative GPA is all of your classes together from grades 9 through 12, right? High school years. Now, can someone tell me when, when does your high school GPA start? Put in the chat when you think your high school GPA starts. What grade, what class, or whatever? When do you think it starts? Anybody know? All right, final grades from ninth grade, okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Ms. Brown. Anybody else wanna guess? When does your GPA start? Whenever you start taking high school level classes, correct. So if you are in eighth grade and you're taking algebra one, you may be taking uh, earth science, you may be taking um, maybe biology or whatever. It is in the eighth grade. If you are taking a core course or class that is considered high school level class. So when you're in eighth grade taking these level classes that are more for ninth and 10th graders, be mindful that GPA counts. Right. So fast forward, when you get to ninth grade, a lot of ninth graders I see are very immature and they don't take school serious. That GPA is added, as you can see, core course is added all along till you get to your 12th grade year. Right. So let's go to, to D2. D2, as you can see, it's the same exact thing. You still need 16 core courses, but the GPA is 2.2. Right. Both of these levels, you have to have your eligibility final certification sent to the NCAA Clearinghouse Eligibility Center. 
It is your job to get your final certification. Now, that means getting your school counselor and them to send your final transcript that qualifies and says you have graduated high school. Okay, next question for you all. What GPA is used for your college admission slash college application? What GPA is used for college application or college uh, submissions? Can anybody tell me what GPA is used? When is that GPA calculated? What GPA is calculated? What GPA is used? I'm trying to figure out any way to say that question. Anybody know? Cumulative, okay, cool. Very good. So at the end, I want y'all to pay attention to this because students that are seniors think they got time. The end of your junior year is the most important GPA that you can have for your high school career. Your GPA at the 11th grade is the one that you are applying to colleges with because most college application early admissions is October, November. The next round is usually December, January. Another one is usually like March. But by the time you would have applied to those schools per se in September, October, January, February, you are only applying with that cumulative GPA that you have received at the end of your 11th grade year. So your 11th grade year is the most crucial period in your GPA requirement core courses, right? Now, does ninth grade count? Remember I said all of those high school credits count, even if it's been in eighth grade, they count. But what the difference is, is that at the end of the 11th grade year, you will not have another transcript, most schools, most schools, transcript upload till after the first semester of your senior year, which is usually February or January, depending on when you start school. So you would have already applied to all, most of the schools that you want to apply to by then. So they're getting that GPA from your 11th grade year. Keep that in mind, please. If you are a junior and you have slacked off because you got junior-itis, it is, <laughs> that's not a good idea. You got to work even harder for these last couple of weeks. So junior is very critical for your GPA requirements for your core classes. Does anybody know what 10 and 7 mean? Anybody know what the 10 and seven rule is? Or 10 and six rule? Anybody know? Has anybody ever heard of 10 and seven? Okay. That means at least how many units you need to have prior to entering your senior year. So you should have at least 10 when entering your senior year for your core course GPA core course for your college admission, for sports, okay? All right, let's continue. Again, drop your question in the chat if you have questions we're going along. I want to get through a couple of things. D3, as I said previously, um, they don't have eligibility for academics, meaning they don't offer money. So it's not per se that you are clearing for NCAA clearinghouse through Division three, but they do have their own other rules that they use and then you can also get a free profile page um, that just puts you into the profile for competing for college athletics, but because they don't actually have money that they give, right? So your academic status, what your academic status with the NCAA means, they, they review it, make sure you're good, D1, D2, have their requested status sent. So that means a college can find you. So most, most students feel like, you know, I'm not being seen and I'm not, you know, nobody knows me. If you are a junior and you have not filled out the clearinghouse form by the time the end of your junior year comes, they're not going to find you. And if the coach does see you and you do an official visit, you have to have the you have to have this done prior to most of them being able to have you on there for an official visit to their campus. Okay, so make sure you know that as well. The 16 core courses, and then again, your final um certification is once you get your high school transcript and you're done as a senior you have to ask for that to make sure um that you get that certification and you're able to play because a college is going to pull that off of the clearinghouse um area okay all right let's go ahead so we're going to shift a little bit um just a little bit we're going to talk about the nil because some students are concerned about that that's in college but also it can happen in high school 
So the NIL name, image, and likeness, of course, it means college athletes can benefit from that. Um, and now with the NCAA, with the NCAA, is no penalty now because it used to be a penalty where if they got money, they would suspend them, they would take scholarship money and all those types of things from them. But now it's not a penalty for that. It's just that the boosters or some of the other people cannot exchange, you know, money and things like that. They can't help them. But some schools tend to take their hands off of it because they don't want to get involved with it. So it just depends. Um, NILs are not always money. It could be goods and services, but it's also just how you participate in that. So I have someone with me today um, that is considered the king of the NIL. And um, this young man is now, he has, because he's a king, he's an HBCU graduate of one school. He's now at the Virginia State University. And I have him as a guest because I want him to just talk about his journey. I'm gonna give him a little Q&A real quick about that so he can give y'all some information about the NIL deals, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about just a couple of pros and cons um, with Raekwon and um, what he is doing and where he is in that real quick. So um, let's go to the next screen real quick. And um, so we're just gonna talk about what it's like, what it looks like and the companies that he has. And so Raekwon, um, he's on here as well and he can talk to us about the NIL. But um, let's just do a little quick thing for um, Raekwon. So Raekwon and I met through uh, Dr. Kimball at Virginia State University, and I connected with the young man. He's been on my podcast, which is going to air in a couple of weeks. Um, but he's very, very mature for his age, I want to say. And I'm thankful that I've had an opportunity to meet him. But I've learned a wealth of information from him as well that I didn't know. But I wanted to make sure that if you all were looking at NIL deals, even if you are um, looking to go to college or you're in high school, Maybe Raekwon can shine some light on you all as well. So let's meet Raekwon real quick. I got a little snippet on here about him. Um, so as I said, he's um, at Virginia State University currently, and he just finished track. And uh, well, I'll let him tell y'all what he want, but he's going to get a ring. Okay, anyway, and he's fast as lightning. So, um, but... One of the things is he has over 80 deals. He makes about five figures, which he, he never tells us the exact amount. But one of the things that's important to, to note that I said in the previous screen, NIL deals is not always money. It could be goods and services or posting on your social media page to get followers. And if people follow you, then that means they're going to follow somebody else. So we go, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to leave it here. And as I said about HBCU, Historical Black College University, Raekwon Smith, um, was the first HBCU athlete to partner with a lot of the companies that he's with right now. So Raekwon, I'm gonna ask you a question. You can tell the tell the crowd. So first thing, um, he's at Virginia State University. Um, he's getting his master's degree, so I'm proud of him for that. So Raekwon, welcome. And just tell them a little bit about yourself really quickly, where your first school was, what you're doing now, and your most recent accomplishment. Hi, uh, how y'all doing? My name is Raekwon Smith. Uh, I went to Holly Springs High School. I won three state championships there in football. Uh, then I attended Norfolk State University uh, for all four years. Got my bachelor's degree in mass communication. Then I graduated. Now I attend Virginia State University with media management, which I do football and I run track. Uh, this is my last track season. Uh, we just came back. We just won the CIAA championship. So I'm getting a ring in that. And that's all. All right, very good. So at this moment, um, Raekwon, tell them about how you how you how you consider the king of NIL, but what did you have to do to get your first NIL deal? Uh I'm the king of NIL because of what I did to become what I did to get NIL deals. Uh the deal was gonna come to me. I had to go out there and get it myself because I went to I went to a North state university where people didn't know what I was, small HBCU. So the way I did it was uh I reached out to a lot of companies and just took a chance to myself. Uh, I sent out over 100 emails and DMs to companies, which I received. Three answers back was a, two no's, one yes by Smart Cups. Then from there, I seen a, one person get like over one deal for 500K, and I knew I wasn't going to get that. So I did my own strategy, and I said, well, I'm going to get a lot of NIL deals to equal the same amount of money, and I'm it's paving the way. So I did it the right way. I mean, I did it the way I could do it. All right. So as one thing I want to talk about what he just said was he went to them and didn't wait for them to come to him because he went to a smaller school. So as you all are, have seen, like especially with, with women's basketball, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, all those young ladies who have those NIL deals and Angel Reese even has some in dicks right now. So 
they are getting, it may say, oh, they have an NIL deal worth $5 million or worth $10 million. It's not always money that they're making, but they have these deals that are giving them certain parts of this, meaning clothing, meaning a line. Um, it could be their goods and services, but also it could be promotions. It could be commercial and things like that, that they're doing. So as Raquan mentioned, he had to go out and get his deals and not let them just come to him. So Raquan, next question for you. As a student athlete, now that you know the rule and what happens and how you get those deals. What would you say was the biggest lesson that you learned through this NIL process? Most people see the money of these players and think it's easy. What would you say you learned, the biggest thing that you learned during this process? Uh, the biggest thing I learned was really just trusting the process. I knew that I wasn't going to get all of everything I get now when I first started because I, I was like, I almost have a nobody, but I wasn't a popular person at the time. So I just had to just stick around, just really keep building my portfolio and just keep building my per personality to keep building who I am as a platform. And once I did that, then I um I grew and I, I received the deals I needed to do. So I was just being consistent and just not letting uh, them nose uh, affect me and what I wanted to do and everything. Because I know most people, when they see a lot of nose and rejection, they, they, they're going to quit that down. But you just got to keep going because you never know that one yes could be that big yes and it could turn a lot a little to something to something big real fast. Very good. And in high school, you can have an NI deal in high school, but you can't promote your uniform, your clothing at the school. But one thing I want to say that he yeah. mentioned was consistency being dedicated, right? So even if you are trying to play a sport in college and you get nobody taps into you, are you going to stop or are you going to keep trying? And some some student athletes, I'm going to just say this because this is a raw conversation. Some of them don't want to play unless they get a D1 scholarship. But have you done D1 work? to get that D1 scholarship. And some of you all are giving up on those D1s because, oh, I don't wanna play no D3 school, but there are more D3 opportunities in, uh, than there is than there are D1 and D2. There are more D3 schools than there are D1 and D2. So you have more opportunity. So when I tell student athletes, don't look past a D3 school because your friend might got a D1, that might not be the place for you. What is the place for you and your consistency, your drive, your dedication? What have you dedicated yourself to? Have you gone to five clinics? Have you gone to different setups? You know, what are you doing? Are you reaching out to the coaches yourself? Are you Is your video right? Is your Facebook together or IG or your Twitter? Can they find you? Facebook might not be for you all, but it might be for your parents. But your Twitter account needs to be on point because that's how they find most students by your Twitter account. If your Twitter account name is Boo Boo Shine the Star. They're not going to look at you. It should be your name your school, your position, could be your height, but you definitely want to make sure that you, they can find who you are by your Twitter account, right? Now, your IG got to be clean. You can't be up there singing, cussing, doing all this foolishness because they're gonna, they can say, you know what, I don't like what they're doing and I'm going to leave. They don't have to recruit you because they talk to you because they're talking to a lot of people at the same time. And be mindful when you're talking about athletics, NIL deal, whether it's playing in college, the portal is a real thing. So if a coach has a student in a portal, he or she may trust that person as being ready than they trust you. So you may have to wait it out. You may have to sit. But some students think because I'm good in high school, it doesn't mean you're the same player in college. It could be. But if you may not. You may have to take that step back for a year or two to prove yourself. So don't run from a college because you're not playing that first year. Oh, this is not good. I, they told me I was going to play. But that portal is a real thing. And if those students are ready and have that college experience, sometimes those coaches are looking at those players more than they're looking at those students who have not had that college experience. So don't give up on D, D3s because, oh, I'm bigger than that. I'm better than that. My mama said I'm better. My coach said I'm better. But are you better? Are you better prepared? For that level. That level takes time. So the next thing I want Raekwon to talk to you all about is two things you learn, Raekwon, about being a college athlete versus being in high school where a coach tells you everything to do, every move to make, what time to come to practice, when to show up, and when to work out. What two things that you learn from college, from the high school ranks to the college ranks? Uh, that's a good question. Only two, Raekwon. I know it's a lot. Just pick two. Uh, I mean, I think I think my high school, you know, it, I think my high school, you know, it it got it got me prepared for the next for the next level. Awesome. But some schools, you know, they don't. But I mean, the biggest thing is really the transition, you know, uh, faster paced game. 
and the biggest thing is just uh you on your own uh no parents nobody tell you what to do so i mean you gotta go to class on your own you gotta want to wake up you gotta want to go to meetings you gotta want to do extra work you gotta want to do different things because like now you're on your own like nobody's gonna tell you what to do so if you don't do it then nobody's gonna tell you what to do uh so that, that's really the biggest thing just make sure uh, the biggest thing too is have a good group of friends like another friend group that's going to push you to be good too and not just want to go out and party and do x y and z okay so let's sum up what you just said the, the two things that you learned from college to high school shout out to howland springs high school i'm gonna go ahead and say that because they prepared you as you said so we're gonna go ahead and give them a little shout out right now we're gonna do the spring all right we'll do that but you also said there aren't parents there to tell you what to do a lot of parents maybe not y'all on the screen or the kids on the screen, parents try to control every part of their kids' lives in high school. And then when they get to college, they're lost. There is nobody saying, get up, go to class. You got to show up. You got to be there when to eat, when to sleep. You're on your own, as you just said, to do those things. So parents, you got to take your hands off of them and let them prepare something. If they forget their Chromebook at home, let them suffer. They're on the phone all the time anyway. Let them use their phone. If they forget their lunch, they're fine. They'll figure it out. Because in college, there is nobody saying, do this, do that, show up. If they forget to do something, don't turn their assignment in at 11.59, that professor, too bad, so sad, they cut that, that assignment notice off. And they got to figure out what to do. The other thing that he also said was a core group of friends or people that's going in the same direction that you're going. So if you are going to college and you're trying to hang with the same people that aren't going to have the same goals as you, you're going to start to fall in that slump with them of not being prepared, not wanting to do because, oh, my friend slept through the whole class. I should speak through the whole class too. But there are some coaches that will come and wake you up out your bed and come put you into the classroom chair. So you got to be mindful of who you are and what you're there for. He also talked about because there aren't parents and because you're on your own per se, you're able to party. You can hang out to whatever time you want. Be mindful that you can't just hang out in those streets, as they call it in the streets, just because you want to, because you may have to go to study hall at seven to nine where your friends are going to happy hour. They shouldn't be in college at 21. But anyway, because they're doing those things, they have the ability to do those things. They try to do that. All right. Lastly, Raekwon. As you matriculated through your freshman year to sophomore year, when did it to junior year, when did it get easy for you to just know, okay, this has clicked. This is my life. This is what I'm doing. I know how to do this. When did it click for you that this is a good thing? I'm good. I got a routine. I got a schedule. This is not as hard as it as it seems. When did it click for you? Uh, I can't. Well, I think mine's probably a little different because uh, going to my freshman spring, that's when COVID hit. Okay. Uh, so that, that COVID year, really just being at home, really not doing nothing, you know, I got to uh, really just sit and really plan out how how it should be versus how it was at first. So I think my COVID, that COVID year really, uh, 2020 really helped me understand like what I want to do, what I want to achieve and how I can achieve it. So uh, that's that's really what it is. So I'll say like at least going to, going to your sophomore year, because your freshman year, you're going to do things, learn from mistakes. Go inside sophomore year, you should be, you should know more than you did freshman year. So, and you should just keep learning. You're always gonna learn and make mistakes and do everything. So you're gonna keep learning throughout your whole college career and everything. And when you get to your senior year and everything, you can't keep making a lot of mistakes now because you know you're going to the real world now. So let them limit mistakes when you get to the senior year. But you're gonna make mistakes though. But just try to limit the mistakes that you do because you're gonna be older soon. Very good. And then lastly. Um, should students take advantage of internships and things that are offered throughout college? Or should they just wait, become a senior, and say, oh, I'm going to find a job tomorrow? How important are the internships for student, students, whether you're a student athlete or not, and you're just a college student? How important are internships for college students? Uh, so the internships, I would say it goes based off your major. Uh, I know my major, mass communication, I didn't need internships to graduate. But like certain majors, you do. But uh, I wish I did do internships. Okay. Because internships will really help you get in the right line, right a right line of people when it's time to go to the next next part of life and chapter for a job and everything. Luckily, I had NIL, so the connections with NIL networking helped me throughout the lines of it. But if I didn't do NIL and stuff, I would have been hit because I wouldn't know people because I didn't do internships. So I'd have right. been just trying to strangle and look for you know work and everything. But if I did internships in the beginning, at least I had somewhere in my foot in the door after I graduate. Very good. So even the introverted student 
need to communicate and get out there, get in the resources. They have the career centers for you in colleges. Use those. They're there to help you. But you have to, if students are quiet, you know, like even at home, they're in their room in a shell, you're going to miss something that's going forward because you're not communicating. As he just said, you got to network. You have to have that networking part and you got to be a part of that to help you. Even again, if you're not playing, you don't want to do athletics, you just want to go to college, that's great. But you still have to have those networks because most student athletes, they have some networks because they know a lot of people because they're in sports and they are going different places. But if you don't have those networks, you still want to make sure that you network even in college, even if you're not playing sports, because you need that network as you are leaving to get jobs and people to know who you are and to make that successful ending of your high school slash college career just great because you've networked with some people. So thank you, Raekwon, for joining us um, tonight. So now, is there any uh, questions in there, um, Ms. Brown, that we need to uh, discuss? Nope, no new questions for now. Uh, one comment, the network is your net worth, and I completely agree. Okay, excellent. All right, Quan, did you want to share anything else with them um, about your NIL deals or about what you have coming up, how they can follow you? That would be great because it's about followers for you. So um, products that you got, um, you want to say anything about that? Uh, no, I just wanted to say, uh, if y'all got any information, if y'all need any questions or uh, anything, just y'all can reach out to me on social media. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll respond to all my DMs when I get And to what them. is your social media um, handle? Page, it's, whatever you want to call it. This, you know, it's just my name. This is my name. Uh, R-A-Y-Q-U-A-N Smith. Uh, it's easy to find me. I try to make it very easy to find my find me so people could reach out to me and everything and that's really all for uh i know people got questions they probably probably don't want to answer on the zoom but they already answering the dms so i know i know how that works and everything they already really asked with the dms rather than on here so yeah gotcha. questions, just let me know well I, okay. I have a question actually and because both of you are here i'm like that was a great time to ask this question from two different pr perspectives one from a athlete. Well, first, thank you, Raekwon. Again, I, your experience is invaluable and I'm really grateful that you cho chose to join us uh, to share. Um, so I'm interested in your experience as an athlete. Um, both who've come through high school and are, you know, who's also an athlete in college, but also, um, Shay, I'm interested in your insight as now the president-elect of the IAAA, um, just kind of from your perspective in leading uh, a lot of the work around, you know, being athletic directing around the state. So what advice would you give to students, uh, particularly athletes who are struggling to have um, access to college access support? I, I recognize because of the type of work I do when I travel around to a lot of schools, when they have events like college fairs or paying for college nights and things like that, uh, high school athletes are at practice or right. aren't allowed to leave um, right. to attend a lot of those events. So their exposure to that is really, really, really limited. Right. Um, and to acknowledge that everyone isn't going to the league, but if they right. spent four years in practice during all of, that, all of that college exposure programming, what advice would you give to them around figuring out what their next steps are? Is that for me? Both, both of you. Okay, um, I'll go first. Um, I would say that, you know, college, it's not for everyone. Let me just start with that. I know we're on a college session, but I got to say college two year school may be where you want to start. And that is OK. You may get to a point where you say my senior year mom or dad, grandma, whoever, I don't want to play sports. Parents, let that be OK. Let that be OK. They may not have it in them anymore. Right. So as she said about student athletes missing a lot of those college sessions and things like that. The best way for them to connect is through the virtual calls, right? So sometimes students can do more than what they really do. They're riding in their car. They're on their they're on their phones 24-7 anyway, looking at TikTok, making videos. So instead of that 30-minute TikTok video that you're watching on, on TikTok or you're making a 10-second video, 2-second video, 20-second, whatever it's called, use that time to go research things that you haven't been able to find out. But if a two-year school or community college is for you, let that be your ride. If a um, career service is best for you, plumber, electrician, hair school, um, barber, beautician, whatever it is, if that's your route, then that's your route because those make money as well. If the military is your route because you need that to pay for college, if a parent has said, I don't have the money, 
then you may can sign up for the military. You may can sign up for reserves. You may can sign up for um, the National Guard. Those things may help you still figure out that you can pay for college. If the workforce is where you want to go, fine. But remember that if you're going into workforce and you don't have a certification, maybe you got it from the technical center, remember that it comes to a point where if that job ever closes, what are you going to do? I tell that to all young people, have a plan of action. Because if they get rid of you, you need a certification of some sort in order to fall back on. So that's what I would say about if you're not, if college, you know, if the sports is not where you want to go or you don't have the time and resources, but you want to tell a parent, mom or dad, you know, I really don't want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. Parents be okay with that as long as they have a plan. It's okay not to follow the four-year track record, but as long as your child have a plan and you help them with a plan, it's okay because college may not be for everyone right out of high school. Some kids are going because they want to please their parents. And some are going because they legit want to get out of the house and they're ready to go. Um, but, you know, make sure that whatever you do is for you um, and how you want to do that. So um, I can let Raekwon do his part if you want to talk. Uh, to answer that question, it's kind of, I don't, I don't know how to answer that because, like, I mean, I think I, I think at Hollis Springs, I, I, I attended, like, all the career fairs and everything. It went during practice times. So if your career is for during practice time. Oh, that's how y'all practicing. Uh, what's the time? Our career is for during the day and everything. Uh, but as far as that, I mean, like I said, I know a lot of people that didn't those that that didn't go go to college and didn't you know pay sports in college. So I know some people that go to college doesn't pay sports. Uh, I mean, you don't have to go to college to pay sports. I mean, you, you don't really have to go to college. We we advise you to go to college, but if you don't want to go to college and you want to choose a different route, then that's that's when you at least have a plan. And, you know, that's the biggest thing, just to have a plan and just don't, you know, go out there and just do whatever. Just have a plan. Know what you want to do, because it's a lot of people that go out and, and just go off what they think they want to do. It doesn't have a plan and just fall down. Then they want to go pick it up again. Might go to the Army and Navy, maybe do a different route after five years later. But if you already had a plan of going out of high school, then you'd be straight. So have a plan. I like that. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so there is one question in the chat. Um, Raekwon, how long did it take you to get your first NIL deal? Uh, the same day. Uh, he got NIL deal the same day. The question was, how long did it take him to get his NIL deal? He said the same day. He's so cocky. Yes. No, <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I just said, I mean, I reached out to the companies at, in the, in like in the, uh, at like 12 a.m. on July 1st. I didn't get the, I looked at my Instagram around like, eight, nine o'clock and see people who reach back out and everything. So, I mean, we talked that day, the product came, he sent the product. I got the product like July 7th, I posted July 7th. So, you know, I got the deal July 1st, but I posted July 7th, so, yeah. So just to be clear, your first NIL deal was products to post, not yes. money. No money. Very good, just wanted I didn't to be get clear. My, I didn't get my first money deal until like August 5th, August 6th, and that was East Bay. Oh, East Bay, okay. So the same year you got the first money deal? Yeah, 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 same deal. It was Very just good. Okay. So I just I just wanted to clarify that NIL, as I said before, is not always money. It could be goods and services posting and also products. So I just want to just be clear on that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh nope, that's it in the chat. Thank you. All right, thank you, Raekwon. Um, and if anybody don't have anything else, um, we don't have to do those last ones because we don't have the time. So I can skip all through that. Yeah. So all right, thank you. We will send out the, the deck along with the recording so folks can access it if they want to. Okay, cool. So thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. And that's my information there. Once again, if you please follow us on IG, um, easy365 underscore mentoring coaches. So you can follow us on IG, 365 underscore mentor coaching no and and then our website 365coaching.bizbiz so if you need more information please reach out to us we're willing to help you we also come to schools and we make sure that your student athletes or just students in general have the college access that's necessary so thank you all so much for joining tonight actually i have one last question yes and i asked this question last year because i just feel like we need to be super clear about yes. certain things so I mentioned earlier that I, I work with a lot of seniors, let me turn my camera on, um, who at the beginning of senior year, they're telling me they're waiting to be recruited. 
Um, I asked, have they heard from coaches? Some may have, some haven't. But um, at what point should uh -huh. a student, like in their high school career, what should they know whether or not they will be recruited by a school? Should they know whether or not they uh, will be playing college uh, athletics, like in a D1 and D2 setting? Like at what point in their high school career? So the question is, when should students know um, they're going to be recruited by D1, D2, and so forth on? So the key is usually D1 schools are reaching out to those top athletes in their freshman, sophomore year. You know, we have people giving students a quote unquote invites and things like that when, it, when they can talk to them, because there are some off periods in their sophomore year, you know, verbal commitments as they kids are posting all those things all the time. But by your junior year, you should know whether you're going to be going to play college ball or not. Now, there are some students who start late. Like there are some students who just decide to pick up a sport in their sophomore, junior year, and it's kind of a little late blooming for them. But what homework are they doing to put themselves out there? Because most students should actually fill out those questionnaires, college questionnaires, athlete questionnaires at the college they're interested in going to. But then they can send DMs or emails to coaches that they're interested in with their profile as well will be helpful. But also make sure you have video for yourself. If you don't have that, there's no need to talk to a coach. Because first thing I'm going to say is send me video. If you don't have video to send a coach, then what's the point of you sending coaching information? Because not all coaches have the time to come and see every single player in a game. Because people have to realize football season same for everywhere. So a coach is playing the same time you're playing or on Friday nights, they're traveling. They may not be able to come to a game, but they, if they're in the area playing at a college, sometimes they stop by those high school games on Friday nights. So when you talk about being recruited and when the time frame to be recruited, a student needs to always be ready. But if they know that this is what they want to do, they start preparing themselves in ninth and 10th grade. Don't wait till you're a senior and say, oh, I want to go to college. I know there are students right now who got the best option because they don't have the grades. And they, really don't have, they don't really have the talent they think they got. They think they're good and they're really not, right? And I know that's harsh, but a student is not as good as he or she think they is if they have not put the work into it. And to be recruited, it's also important to go to those combines if you're in basketball, I mean, football, um, but go to those clinics, go to camps, go to, go to team, go to single camps, go to camps where you're going to see college coaches are there and can recognize you. Sometimes there's so many people at these places you like, am I even being seen? That's why you want to go to more than one. So if you're a college athlete, you want to be a college athlete, you're looking to play sports, at least every summer, get yourself to two and three places that you can be seen. Fill out that questionnaire for the college that you anticipate on going so that you have an opportunity to, to know that you're in the pool. And then at the end of your junior year, like I said, if you know you want to play, go ahead and fill out your NCAA clearinghouse form and get that in there because coaches, first thing they're going to do is going to look to see have you put in your, um, your NCAA clearinghouse form. So I would say, as long as you know that you want to go, you need to start early in parents. Um, you can't do everything for them. They have to learn to do things for themselves. Um, so I would say that as well. Thank you, Shay. You know, that was that was really useful on many levels. That was definitely useful. So she said, start early, mm -hmm. start planning ninth grade year, but you should know by your junior season, the end of your junior season, if you're going to be playing, uh, be, going to be recruited to play on a collegiate level. I mean, um, there are some exceptions, right? Yeah. And I would say most students know, like there are some kids who kick it in their senior year, right? They kick the notch up. I mean, they just doing everything. But even if that senior year becomes great, remember that coach may have been looking at other students before you came with that bang out year. So sometimes students are getting what is left, but, oh, I don't want to go there. But are you getting a chance to play, though? Now, do they have your major is also important. Don't go to a school because they're giving you money and don't have your major. Now you're mad for four years that you can't be in the major you want to be in. So now you wasted some time. Right. So sometimes you may have to find that D3 school that actually has your major or a different three D3 school that has your major. But if the money is going to be there for one, it's going to be there for the other. But you got to fill out that FAFSA form for your D1, D2 schools because they're giving you money, um, you know, D3 as well. But if you're getting any kind of federal aid, you got to make sure you fill out the FAFSA form anyway. And it, this year has been a little crazy with those, but make sure you fill those out. So, Man, yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Seriously, you're welcome. I, I really appreciate you giving your time. Well,
and your expertise. I always walk away with tons of notes uh, because it's like, yep, I forgot that. Yep, I forgot that. And so yeah, absolutely. Um, I really do appreciate you taking the time. And as Shay said, if you want more individualized time with her, she this is her business. So if you need support from her, please lean into her. She is an expert. She's been doing this for, for many years, over 20 years. And so um, if you need, wait, I thought we talked about over the, a no, lot of years. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> a like, lot of years. When, when you say it on paper, when you say it out your mouth, it really sounds like, oh my God. <laughs> that just means that just means you are experienced. You're good at what you oh do. My, and really, thank she, you. she provides I appreciate a lot of it. insight. She doesn't just think about the athlete playing, she thinks about the student and what their experience is going to be like. And Absolutely, so yeah. I really, really, really encourage you to reach out if she can be of any support. Um, she's such an invaluable resource. And she's willing to do this talk at schools and other organizations um, as a part of her business. So please reach out. She would love to be able to support you. Um, thanks also to Raekwon. Um, loved his insight. Loved his testimony. Um, loved that he is the, the king of NILs. I love it. I, I love everything about it. And he's from Highland Springs. It's an amazing story. I hope most yeah. people see us from the I hear about uh, his success uh, there for sure. Absolutely. So um, if there are no more questions, everyone who's registered for the talk will receive um, the recording of this. And it's also going to go out on our listserv. Um, we'll also send out this uh, PDF through a link so that you'll be able to, to access it as well. Uh, but thanks again, everyone, for your time. And have a great evening. Thank you all. Thank you.